Hello everyone and welcome to episode 10 of the Film Score Podcast. My guest is composer Tom Hodge. Tom's probably most well known for his work on the series McMafia and the documentary The Rise of the Nazis, as well as his extensive work in experimental music, as well as composing for ballet, various other media such as advertising, and chamber music as well. He's really done a lot. But his newest project is the score for the legal and political drama The Mauritanian, which stars Tahar Rahim, Shailene Woodley, Jodie Foster, and Benedict Cumberbatch. And it tells the story of Mohamedou Slahi, who was kidnapped and wrongfully imprisoned in Guantanamo Bay, as well as the investigation into and legal case regarding his release. It's quite a powerful film and a really powerful score in which Tom draws upon his many influences and experiences. You can also find Tom on various social media and on his website to find out more about him. And of course, you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at The Film Score, as well as my website, thefilmscore.com, for more information, reviews, interviews, all relating to film music. Now, I hope you enjoyed this interview, and... Let's go. Tom, I'm, uh, I'm so glad you joined me today. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, of course. Your latest project is The Mauritanian. How did you get started on that? Well, I, yeah, I just uh, got a call from my agent one day saying, we've got this, <laughs> <laughs> got this quite interesting project, which, <laughs> which we're trying to get you on. So um, it all happened pretty quickly, actually. Once, once I heard about the possibility, you know, I was very soon chatting to Kevin and very soon after that writing a few concept demos and then there was a little hiatus of uh while the while I think all the the powers that be thought about it and then um it was all go because the deadline was fairly extreme and that's uh, that's Kevin McDonald who the you know, the director who also did uh, among other things the last king of scotland that uh, people might know so when when you were brought on at, at what stage was it were you you know, scoring to film? Was it the script? What was it? Uh, I was scoring to, uh, yeah, Final Cut, and everything was in very good shape in that respect. Essentially, I think there were, without going into detail, other composers before me, and, yeah, and the music wasn't... So the music was the last thing to get resolved. In terms of workflow... Yeah, that was quite handy, really, because I had yeah, picture was locked, the sound was very, was very clean. There were no question marks there, and uh, I knew exactly what to expect. So no, I came on, came on very late, and the deadline was yeah six weeks from when I started. So <laughs> fully mixed, recorded, orchestra, the works. Yeah. So I mean, I I think I think it's more common than it should be, as far as I know, that these kind of crazy deadlines. But well, there are pluses and minuses. You know, you always hope to get on nice and early and have a bit of time to think about it. But um, this way is also, yeah, every everyone's minds are really concentrated, including your own. And, you know, it's like, OK, let's go for it, you know. Yeah. And you just clear clear the decks and hit the deadline. <laughs> I was going to say with with six weeks, you know, I, I guess at least the the positive of that is there's no being on the fence or wondering, oh, do I do this or do that? You just have to go. Yeah, yeah, no, that's you're absolutely right. I mean, I reckon as as a media composer, it's pretty hard to spend too long on the fence just because of the deadline. Um, I mean, if you're on nice and early and you can experiment with concepts and try and go down a few alleys that might end up being blind, then <laughs> you know that's okay. But yeah, when the when time's not on your side, then absolutely, yeah, you've you have to commit to to an idea, and as always, yeah, yeah that's there's the pluses and the minuses. Um, but it's yeah. Because of that, then I mean, how much how much time did you have to sort of brainstorm these the concepts and the uh, the different kind of distinct palettes that you use throughout the score? Well, I just had to go for it really and make some make some choices based on early discussion you know the discussions with Kevin so it was very clear straight away how thematic he wanted it to be in terms of you know character based thematic really well the three leads plus a more um sound worldy theme around Guantanamo so then it was just a case of finding 
for answers to start with because it needs to be so thematic i was one of those things one of those uh, scenarios where i kind of had to sit down at the piano and write a theme you know fairly old style really and try and find something that i thought would be robust enough that was going to carry through and then immediately you take that and explore a couple of options which you then share with with the director and if that sort of feels like it's landing you can try and roll it out and see see where it leads i actually haven't done that for a while it's it yeah you might call it kind of you know old school or old-fashioned way of going about it maybe i I don't i'd be interested to speak to other composers where i'm sure lots of people do still just sit down the piano you know but for me i'd quite often just explore a sound world and maybe try some production concepts simultaneously with writing melodies and and sort of gently see where it leads whereas this was very much like okay i need Need some clean kind of melodic harmonic answers and we have to get them now you know the, the night the gig was confirmed i was i was at the piano obviously trying to write write mohamedou's theme you know um and that that's what stuck yeah to the same degree really with couch cumberbatch's character jodie's foster character nancy's theme took a bit longer there's a lot more back and forth. The kind of Guantanamo sound world, I sort of just left to the end because these more sort of sound world type themes, as soon as you're into trying to create something that is more production based, that type of stuff takes a lot longer because it's not just a melody that's kind of springing out of your head. It's much more like, oh, well, <laughs> you can spend spend hours just messing around with how much saturation you want to use on <laughs> some, some uh, distortion plugin or whatever, you know. So yeah, I left that one till later but no it was it was very much a case of hitting the ground running really yeah how i just i think your very original question was how 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 i distinguish them and uh, i sort of just found my way i knew that i was going to need to pigeonhole them and i sort of just waited to see how the how the music landed and then sort of siphoned them off in different directions which became clear fairly quickly it does work with how the film is structured, where a lot of it is basically cordoning off an individual character, following them for a little while, and so it allows for that personal theme to carry through. That makes a lot of sense. And talking about the sound design aspect, or not sound design, but soundscape, sound world aspect, mm. there's obviously some underscoring going on, but then that really comes to the forefront later on in the film where in two separate types you have these sort of dreamy aspects of Muhammadu where he's imagining being somewhere else and somewhere much more positive and then the hallucinatory sequence where it's not underscore I mean it comes to the forefront and really takes the the viewer into this just like hellish nightmare world <laughs> yeah yeah no, that's that. That's exactly it, and that's that sequence is. <laughs> it's really quite long, you know. It's most of real six actually. There's sort of what three or four or five cues almost that go pretty much back to back, and it was an interesting period when I when I got onto that section. <laughs> I was sort of <laughs> pushing it back, pushing it back, and I was like, "Here we go. I have to watch, watch these scenes in special projects over and over again." Which was uh, grueling, you know. For anyone who hasn't seen it yet, it's a a film that follows both a prisoner in Guantanamo Bay as well as the court case that coincides with it. And so there is a very graphic, horrible, torture nightmare sequence uh, later on in the film. I don't know, what's your mentality or what's, what's going through your mind when you're watching something like that? I mean, it's not, it's not a normal action sequence where people get shot, but it's, you know, it's cinematic. I mean, that is mm. just really visceral. Yeah, and that's absolutely how Kevin wanted it. Yeah, it makes it much. It does make it much more intense to score, as you say. When when it's a sort of more typical action sequence, you do kind of have a certain distance, which makes it easier. Whereas this was right in amongst it. Yeah, I mean the other the interesting production challenge as well was it was of all the sections where you didn't really know how the sound was going to be, it was also those because of course those kind of sections could be completely sound driven and be just as powerful or they could be fully music driven and you never really know those kind of answers until the final dub so you're kind of just as the composer you're trying to find an answer that you think will land if the director chooses to go with music really to the forefront but equally if it then 
happens to be more underscore that'll work and they compare it back and what have you i mean i suppose i was you're relying on the themes that you've presented especially with mohamedou's theme and also couch which becomes a in more general terms i suppose is a military justice type of theme and you're relying on those having landed enough that when you distort them and manipulate them and or completely redefine them that that material is still going to connect you to the narrative and so you can sort of think of the music in the same way as as what's happening to Mohamedou you know and you can just think about distressing the theme and manipulating it extremely darkly and and that gives you something to hang on to in a broader sense too with the content and the tone of the film I mean it's throughout quite a dark quite a disturbing film that kind of where that ratchets up as it goes. Do you have any hesitation working on a project like that, especially kind of with the political undertones or overtones, I guess, throughout it? Um, I guess in this respect, it, it's kind of helpful because it's, it feels like a story that's in, important to be told. I guess if you really didn't agree with the message or, or what have you, then that'd be a whole different kettle of fish. The caveat to that would be it. You're not always it. You're, well, you're only sometimes in that wider political space in your head, to be honest. Like when the project comes in and you realize what it is, then you're there and you're like, oh, wow, OK. And maybe it, and you watch it for the first time and you see this is a true story come up and, and you've done a bit of research and you realize what exactly took place with Slahi. But then, of course, you get into the the filmmaking process and there's that other side of you know, you're really you're trying to do right for the film and the characters in the film and the narrative. So then it becomes about the character portrayals and and the storytelling. And then I suppose you get to the end and you realise that, yeah, especially now afterwards, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I, I saw that uh, Slahi had a you know an op-ed all about what was going to happen to Guantanamo. And then, you, of course, you realise that it's... Uh, it, that sort of throws you back into this wider political sphere and, and you realise... Uh, that it's not just just a film, you know, it, it's a true story. Oh, that's a very powerful thing. I tend not to read about films before I watch them, or, or to read as little as possible, because I, I just like going in that totally clean slate. So I had, I had no idea what it was about, and then watching it, I had no idea that it was actually based on a true story. I, I kind of thought it was just a uh, dramatization. And yeah, I mean, especially as... An American, I very distinctly remember 9-11 happening. So that whole last 20 years is very, very much a part of mine and every other American adult's mentality. I mean, that's that's just been kind of yeah. built inside of us. And so it, it is particularly powerful, even if you know some of the things that were going on, to actually see them on screen like that. That just makes it so much more impactful. And I mean, the, the fact that... that it was going on a couple of years ago. I mean, so relevant. I mean, it's it still exists. Yeah, the whole thing feels very raw, doesn't it? But I mean, obviously, that's not. And I don't. I don't even want to say controversial. But taking certain political or historical works is not something that you've shied away from. You know, one of your most recent projects was scoring the uh, the documentary series, The Rise of the Nazis. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was another another great project. Really interesting especially in in the context of you know what's going on <laughs> politically in UK and the states scoring that did did help with the, with the darker, <laughs> the darker scenes actually I, I remember doing first sort of first set of concept demos for Rise of the Nazis and uh, Julian Jones the director he was you know broadly was very enthusiastic about what I'd done he was like but I guess his, his main note was he want he just he wanted less hope <laughs> and I was like, and it was, it was actually very, it was very interesting to think about because most music has something like even the even say the the saddest piece uh, has the part of the reason why it's so emotive is is the possibility of hope. Equally, the most joyous piece, part of the reason why you can feel that joy is because of the knife edge of despair and I, I think I'd probably say that about most music and that's why one of the things that it kind of resonate for people you know when they feel 
you know, the feeling and emotion, it's this, it, it's actually a dual one. So, so then to be, so then to try and dampen that completely just to this really dark, hopeless place, that was, that was, that was very interesting. Uh, and it made, made for a very strong concept from a music perspective was great to get on because you have this very focused idea and it's like right okay but actually yeah then that became quite useful when we are in the darker the you know the darkest of dark places with uh with Mohammedu. sticking with the the darkest of dark places <laughs> i mean <laughs> i've talked with some composers and you hear some directors or writers who when they talk about creating that sort of material you know they have to channel something within them or or you know reach their own personal dark places in order to create that is that something that you had to do as well that's a tricky question of all the times when you're feeling the reality of you know the true story it's probably there i'm not necessarily going to a dark place but i'd be going to a despairing place you know what what does this say about humanity Mm mm-hmm so yes and no i mean i mean that whole section had to be done in the timeline was still i was probably got through it in in about four or five days you know so but for that period of time when i was watching it over and over again yeah well, i definitely wasn't wasn't sleeping that well it was a sort of dark despair i suppose and in a similar vein between that and rise of the nazis at least are you are you hoping to be able to work on some projects that, and maybe your kids are much older and this doesn't apply, uh, but that they can actually watch and enjoy and be like, oh yeah, you, know, you worked on this. Yeah. yeah, do you know what? That would be quite nice. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're four and three, so they definitely won't yeah, be watching they're, they're this just for under, a while. Just under the age range for that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, McMafia was pretty dark as well, so... Mm. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's <laughs> maybe people are uh, thinking. Oh yeah, he'll do something uh, <laughs> really awful for us. <laughs> um, yeah, no. I, do you know what? I, I like. I do like. I, I do like the variety. I think that's partly why I'm. I'm always making records as well, and I still keep a hand in lots of other things, like make you know doing commercials and because yeah, I, I love um, exploring different musical worlds and i'd be very happy to, to try something <laughs> with a little with a little bit more cheer yeah um i mean at the same time you know it's like it's it's amazing to to get these projects that are, have so much emotion in them you know you're not you're not sort of searching for inspiration you know it's very powerful the whole package it's kind of yeah you know, whether yeah. it's the the narrative or the brilliant acting and portrayals or just the the story itself or i mean that that's that's an amazing thing to be able to channel so um if people can you know if people keep wanting me to do that then that's all good too but <laughs> especially with these sorts of projects if if you have that constant inspiration why work on anything else if that's just keeping you inspired and to be able to to just write without having to bang your head against the wall hoping you can come up with a cue or a theme or a motif yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly it. I, I was, I was actually just, um, I had a message from Sony yeah, from yes, yesterday saying, give us some kind of quote uh, for the soundtrack, and I wrote a few mm. bits and bobs. But actually, the thing that I ended up, you know, the kind of final sentence was was basically exactly that. It was that inspiration was was not hard to come by. You know, it's you can't ask for more than that, really, can you? Because um, you know, that's that's kind of why we do the job. You know, something comes in, and and you're like, right, and if you can just get straight into it and it's just flowing because you're being inspired by by what you're seeing and, and hearing then that's a fabulous way to work yeah i have that um and, and you mentioned sony so is there a soundtrack release of your score coming out yes yeah i think it's coming on the 12th as well um oh, perfect yeah so uh yeah we've got the whole the whole score coming out i think it's which is like 34 cues or something uh which is really nice because it's kind of you know sometimes you want to do a, a sort of a summary of your of the world that you created and keep it quite succinct but this was really this kind of amazing quite elongated and multifaceted narrative with the four plots or or you know four the four themes kind of all coming together into this um bringing you to the scene in the courtroom and and so yeah it's great that that we're going to have a, a soundtrack version of that as well you know you can sort of feel feel the shape of the score 
and how it develops and you know when it goes through that that section which you talked about in where where it gets it gets very dark and electronic and hallucinatory and and uh yeah and then sort of sort of comes out the other side with couches realizations and you know that by that stage his theme has been completely transformed and finally with the big sort of statement of Mahamadou's theme at the end so I'm excited to share it actually I hope people like it <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope so too obviously when you're working on a, a film or a documentary you don't start working on it with the hope that this is going to get released I mean the the score itself individually is released but it, I mean that has to be a nice feeling having your work coming out on its own. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. You never uh, sound soundtrack albums are funny things, aren't they? Because you know the soundtrack is you're writing music for picture. You know it's applied music and it's functional music and and it has a a fundamental and indelible relationship with 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 the image and so and then here we are sort of detaching it and presenting it as music and as a record soundtracks have proven to be and soundtrack music is is has proven to be particularly popular in you know recent years but so i suppose there's that you're sort of putting that aside and it's, it's just a lovely uh personal satisfaction that uh, your music's going to be out there and people are going to get to listen to it you made the good distinction there of first and foremost it's it's functional it's music to picture it's meant to enhance the film itself but then previously you were talking about the hope that the release kind of takes you on a similar journey how much work did you have to do in crafting the standalone soundtrack to make sure it creates that journey as well or i mean was that just taking all the cues setting them in and and it worked anyways well in this case it was it was kind of that yeah because i've included every single cue in order, which I have not not done before. Yeah, normally you kind of shuffle them about. You maybe you're looking for you're trying to make a judgment about what's the right musical experience and yeah, you know, whether they feel substantial enough to be to stand alone. But in this case, yeah, I, I just felt like it should stay connected to the narrative and it should be one of those types of records where it's very much the musical that standalone musical version of what went on really for the effectiveness of the film and and for the viewer and you know in general for the listener you know, you're able to whether consciously or subconsciously follow that journey also but you know like you said that's that's film scoring i mean that's great scoring going back 120 years or longer yeah i think i think this is another reason why this felt putting aside how successful i've been uh it with, with <laughs> this film let, let's ignore, or leave someone else to judge that but the concept of it is it's exactly what you're saying you know it's like you know, picking picking a series of themes which start at the beginning and help you through the narrative and they you know help the character's journey and and help the audience understand the character's journey you know that is timeless logic of scoring films and i, I suppose we have different scenarios now where sometimes you you can have a more sort of something's just very sound worldy mm. and it's much more stylized or you could have something like a film you have films that are deeply sort of monothematic and or you can have yeah you know, there are there are lots of different ways now we we approach things but this one i felt was was very much in the lineage of decades worth of of how one should go about it yeah right it is interesting you you mentioning all the different ways to approach it now because i think so many people are, are steeped in kind of the Wagnerian leitmotif, and you know that's where a lot of this comes from. And mm. especially in recent years, not that it's fallen away, but like you said, there there are so many more ways to go about it, mm. um, which I quite like. You know, some people mm. like the the classic orchestral five themes, and you know, there's there's mm. uh, plenty of that and room for that too. But with those different approaches, and especially with your background in a lot of more experimental music do you necessarily go in to a project thinking all right i'm going to do themes i'm going to do something more monolithic or is it like you said where as you are experiencing the project then it comes out as no i i've got to do these four themes yeah no that's exactly it uh you know it was a it was a shock to me to be sitting there writing leitmotifs yeah i didn't really expect to be going at it that way and you know like picking out a you know a set of notes uh, and chords on the piano and thinking to myself 
is this robust enough to be able to manipulate and you know if i did the or reharmonize there and i i don't normally go at it like that at all i, I would be much more uh, as you describe this kind of let's see where where things lead and i suppose start by looking for more experimental answers because uh I don't know. That's what appeals to me. But I also think for, you know, audiences are quite sophisticated, you know, in their film music listening anyway. So, and obviously I try to do it. You, you Then you try and do it in your own way, you know, and kind of Mohamedou's theme, I suppose, really does fall in a kind of light motif -y logic to it. Couch, you know, because it's so much more hybrid and has a kind of electronic and a glitchy element to start with and part of the transformation was was much more kind of a mangling of the string parts so you know in a, in a more experimental way and nancy probably the second most light motify you know and she, she was interesting in that it, it was needed to feel quite commercial up front like genuinely legal thrillery the challenge of all these plots and bringing people into what was going to be a really challenging story, you know. So hers was, you know, you wanted it to be music that felt like it was. I, I need to, un, I need to uncover this this legal mystery, and I got to follow the follow the answers and follow the truth and follow justice and and. But then the Guantanamo theme, you couldn't really call a theme. It's it's a sound. It's very much a sound world. You know, it's absolutely experimental sound world, which you then drag in mangled bits of all the other themes. So now that would be from you know, mm -hmm. from a more modern take on film scoring, where you're like, okay, I want my sound world to be this bit of. Well, technically, you'd be kind of, oh yeah, I'm going to drag in this bit of spring reverb and that bit of this, and I'll use this uh, type of manipulation and I'll put it through there, and you know, so that and that came about from m much more sort of like dark colors and yeah, more my kind of esoteric record making and <laughs> things like that. So yeah, even even in my even even having talked about my very uh, light motif -y, uh, <laughs> film score, there, there's obviously lots of other stuff involved. I mean, it is very fitting because I was surprised at the use of themes because I think with films like that or much more um, modern or visceral films, you don't really s hear them as much. Mm. And I think, you know, in a lot of ways, because they're so tied to uh, the idea of, you know, having very obvious melodies, and sometimes it just doesn't quite work with that style of film. So I was, I was surprised, but at the same time, it makes a lot of sense that they're not these just overwhelming melodies. There's a lot of experimentation and soundscape and everything. So it's, yeah. it, it was quite an interesting mixture. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was really delicate balance, you know. I, for example, with Mohamedou, I remember when I, when I first came up with the, the kind of main cell, the first thing I thought to myself was, could I just put this melody over a drone? And will it still, in very general terms, put it over a, you know, some kind of soundscape, gently undulating, and would it still come across? You know, and that was one of the first things I tried. In fact, and that is... Yeah, you know, that's kind of where the opening title sequence comes from. You know, it's this stillness, which is made up of bits and you know strings and, but also uh, electronic elements. But also, then when it does need to be a kind of something which which moves harmonically in order, then it was also possible. That's exactly it. I I was trying to find the balance between those two states, um, and I think it means probably you know the melodies or the harmonic motion does need to be maybe a, a bit more subtle than just um that kind of direct here's here's the big theme for right. for the hero type type thing but then you know as you said it it allows that balance to kind of oscillate throughout the film you know at some points it's more in the forefront or other times less mm -hmm. so just based on what's going on and i think creating that balance in the beginning lets you you know much more organically uh, move throughout the film oh good well <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad you think so but no i mean you know it's it's great then when you do have that set that you can you know you can deliver something you know in the more especially the two the handful of kind of really emotive moments for Mohamedou and you've got you've got somewhere to go there because mm -hmm. you know you do have this melody that you can just roll out in uh, universal language of piano and strings you know <laughs> right. but then have quickly disappear off into uh, melange 
Absolutely. And so we're, we're uh, just about running out of time, but I did want to change gears really quick before we part ways. You've been scoring for media for quite a long time, uh, mm. 15, almost 20 years, mm. as well as creating music for quite a while as well. Do you have any advice for anybody who's starting out or kind of in those early years? Ah, uh, the advice question. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Yeah. I. Where, where am I going to say? Should have. I should. Should have thought this was coming. Uh, once. Again, I had. To, I, I had to surprise you with it. Yeah. Once I've been. Yeah, once. Once again, I've been ill prepared. Um. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? It's all. I mean, it's always been. It's always been a tough industry. I. I think it's particularly. Uh, it's particularly difficult. To, uh, that's putting Corona aside as well. It must be next to impossible. Let's let's just put that aside. But even in even in better times, I guess I would say you you just need to try and find a, something that sounds like you. No one's expecting you to to reinvent the wheel, you know. But at the same time, I think focusing on trying to find an original voice is really important, you know. And and it's something I I think about every piece of scoring that I do you know it's you know first and foremost you're like how can I make this serve the the project that I'm on you know serve the picture after that and very swiftly after that I think to myself what can I do that I feel is some kind of you know original statement and at least striving for it, you know, who knows whether you can, whether you succeed every time. But I, I think that's pretty important. I think it, I like to think it comes across in the music, you know, it's like working hard to, whether it's a surprising selection of instruments or a su- surprising harmonic motion or a surprising bit of surprising sound world or an interesting reference or whatever it might be. All the other advice I'd give would probably be the more standard things, you know, like working hard and and um being ready for the opportunity when it comes you know that's that's the thing it's like you don't get a, a rehearsal when the moment comes you have to be ready for it so even that kind of advice i'd say is a bit you know it's the kind of thing that uh, that, that that's all i can think of <laughs> <laughs> for being unprepared and uh for me catching on the spot that, that, that was a it was a good but more importantly it was it, it was an honest answer Good. Well, there you go. That's, uh, I think I try to approach that in the music, you know, I try and, you know, it always, you know, maybe, maybe this is part of, maybe I'm now carrying on with the answer, but it's like finding the truth in everything. You know, it doesn't, that's, that's pretty key because that, I think people can feel that. I think you can feel that in the music, you know, that's kind of falls into the serving the picture side of things it's actually kind of more it's more important than the originality you know if you can if you can find the truth in it then you can find the truth just by playing it on the piano you know okay great if you're um you know you're a production genius fabulous but there's always some truth to be found it doesn't matter like something like the mauritanian you know like we said the inspiration is uh, very easy to find but it doesn't matter there's whatever you're staring at there's always something that you can draw on to make some kind of emotional resonance then the listener feels that and hopefully you know and in, and in the case of um, you know aspiring film composer if that listener is someone who's going to commission something if they feel that 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 they're going to connect to that and that's that might be what the break is and then after that it's about being ready and all the all those other things I appreciate it. You know, I, if, if you have someone who has a wealth of experience, you've got to draw on it a little bit at least. Very good. Tom, I, I really appreciate you joining me. Thank you. I enjoyed our chat. That was good. <laughs> good. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> so, uh, you know, sign off and have a, have a good rest of the weekend, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, enjoy the snow. <laughs> <laughs> well, 